In WordPress, content typically takes the form of either posts or pages. And that's really easy to add that content for you or your client. You know, you create a new post, you fill in some predefined fields like the title, the main body, um, the excerpt, maybe add a featured image, hit publish, and that's it. And the display of that content is handled by your themes single post template, or if you added a page, by your themes page template. Now, the beauty of the default WordPress way of handling this is that it's really, really easy to add content. You mean literally just filling in some fields and hitting publish. It's, as a designer and a developer, is much easier for you to maintain because you've got one template in one place to make changes. It's foolproof as well for clients because they can't access that template so that they can't ruin your design. It's more efficient, it saves time, and it allows you as the designer to maintain control and consistency of the design across the entire website. And it sounds perfect, right? Now, as a non-coder designer, you're using Elementor to create the exact custom layouts you want because that's what it does. But what I've just described is not how Elementor works. Well, at least by default anyway. But the good news is you can use Elementor to design your single post template. So you can have all the benefits of the default WordPress way of adding and displaying content, as well as Elementor's drag and drop custom design control. And I'll show you exactly how to do it. We'll be using a third party plugin called Anywhere Elementor Pro. I'll be clear right now, this is a paid plugin, but it's very inexpensive, especially for what it does. And it does way more than what I'm going to show you today. All right, let's dig in. So to start with, I've installed a fresh copy of WordPress and I'm using the Generate Press theme. The theme you use for this doesn't really matter. I've added a quick blog post. Well, my last video was about beer, so for you beer lovers, this one's in the same vein. Now, I've just added a title, some content in the main body copy field, I added an excerpt in the excerpt field down here, and I also added a featured image. Now this is all default WordPress stuff. I could have added some custom fields using the plugin like ACF or pods, but I'm keeping this one very simple. Now by default, this blog post on the front end looks like this. Bear in mind, I've spent no time at all on designing this in GeneratePress's customizer. You know, the, the styling options in Generate Press for single posts is brilliant anyway. It's well worth checking out. So what you're seeing here is the content displayed with my theme's default single post template. My theme's header is here, and then the single post template content is here. And before we carry on, just in a few months time when you've forgotten everything I've shown you in this video, I can guarantee you'll be pleased to have a quick and easy reference to hand. So I've made you a simple one page PDF cheat sheet for this whole process. Very handy. So to grab your own cheat sheet, just head to designbuildweb.co slash Elementor single post template. Drop in your details and I'll send it over. All right, back to it. I've already bought and installed Anywhere Elementor Pro. I added a new template in the menu here and this template will be our single post template. The title is purely for your own reference. I've called it blog post one because I'll later be showing you how to create a second alternative single post template too. For this template, I've disabled the content title in Generate Press's Disable Elements meta box. And that's just because in this single post template, I want to control the post title myself. But I will leave the header and footer in because I want to see these when I'm designing this template. I've also chosen the full width container in Generate Press, just so Elementor can use the full available width of the page. Now, before we build this template with Elementor, let's just look at the plugin's settings for this page. So here is where you tell the plugin how and where this template should be rendered. So for our purposes here, we want the post template. Now, by default, the plugin just pulls in the content from your latest blog post just to help you design the template. You'll see that in a moment. But if you wanted to pull in a specific post to design around, then you just put the ID of that post here. 
Post type is to choose whether this template is for single posts or single pages. And if you have any custom post types installed, like events or products, then they'll be in the list too. And ticking auto apply, as the name suggests, will automatically apply this single post template to every post. But you can override this on the edit page for each post if you want to. I'm going to leave it unchecked. And this will have WordPress use my themes single post template unless I pick one I've made with Anywhere, Elementor Pro. Right, we're ready to design and build the actual post template. So just click edit with Elementor. So we're now in Elementor's editor, building the single post template. And we'll build it like any other Elementor layout, except if you notice in the list of widgets here now, we've now got a new set of widgets added by the plugin. So we'll drag these onto our layout and then these will dynamically display the content from our posts. I'll show you as we go. So let's start making the single post layout. I'll keep it very simple. So firstly, I'll add a section, just one column. I'm going to set a narrower content width than the rest of the site in the layout settings for the section here. I just want to make the posts easier to read with narrower line lengths. In the section style tab, I'll set a colored background. Now I want my post title in this section. So rather than using a static heading widget, I'll drag in AE Pro's post title widget. I don't want it to link to the post. And my H1 headings are a dark color in my theme setting. So I'll override that in the style tab with white. Right, let's have an Elementor Pro share buttons widget underneath. I'll drag that into place. I'll lose Google Plus and LinkedIn. Set this to icon only. Set the shape to circle, button size 0.7 and icon size can be 2.6. Now I want the date and author displayed here. So I'll come back to the widgets again and I'll drag in the plugins post meta widget. I'll turn off categories, turn off tags. And in the style tab, I'll set the text color to white and just drag the transparency down a bit. Typography, I'll set size to 14. And then down in icon settings, the icon color could be white. All right, now we need a bit more space in this section here. So I'll add some extra padding to the section. So up to the section settings again, into advanced. Unlink, and I'll add 40 pixels top and bottom for now. And now we need another section for the rest of the content. So I'll add a new one column section. I'll set the same narrower content width, just like I did for the first section. And in here, I want the featured image first. So back to the widgets and down to the post image widget. Drag it into place. And I'll set image size to full. Now I want this image to overlap the section above. So I'll add some negative top margin to do that. So up to the advanced tab, I'll unlink the margins. And for now, I'll go down to minus 40. All right, now I could actually do with more room inside this section to handle the overlap. So I'll go back up to the section padding settings again in advanced. And let's set something like 110 pixels just to give it more room. So now back to the image. Well, now I reckon we can make that minus 80 and pull that right up over the top. And to add a bit of pizzazz, I'll come to the post image style tab and I'll add a border. I'll set the color to white. 
I'll make it 15 pixels Polaroid style -y. And now I just want to add a nice drop shadow just to lift it nicely off the page. So in this widget, that's in advanced and it's down in border. Turn box shadow on and just tweak those settings slightly. Right, I'll preview that so far. Not bad. Okay, let's get the post content in now. Well, the first paragraph, I actually want it to be pulled in from the excerpt field in the post. So to do that, we come back to the widgets list. I'll drag in a post content widget. Set show excerpt to yes. And to make sure we see all the excerpt, I'll set the size to 200. I want to style this field a bit differently to the rest of the page. So over to style and typography. Size to 22. Weight a bit bolder, 600. And then in color, I'll set the text a bit lighter. And finally, just to add the actual blog post itself. So we come back to widgets again. This time it's another post content widget. This time don't show the excerpt. And I'll just leave that as it is. So quick preview again. Very nice. And then save. Now just a couple of things. You'll notice here that there's a gap at the top whereas there wasn't a gap in the preview. And this is only because Elementor needs to leave a gap in the editor for its section controls here. And just as an aside, if you're using Generate Press, the theme in its style sheet also adds a bit of space at the top of blog posts. So you'll also have a gap if you're trying to achieve what I've got here. So I'll just show you, I used a little bit of custom CSS. You can just see that here, and that loses that gap for you if you need that. Now remember, we also have the alternative blog post layout as well. Now it's very easy. I just created another template in Anywhere Elementor Pro and I set it as the post template like before. And to get the featured image in the background, just click into the section settings and you'll see we've got another tab here in the settings for AE Pro. And that allows us to place the featured image as the background to the section. The rest of it is really straightforward. This is the post content widget set to excerpt. This is the post content widget set to the main content. Our last job is to apply these templates to our blog posts. So first, let's just hop back to the blog post I added, and this is just being displayed using my themes default single post template. And remember, if I'd set one of my templates to auto apply earlier, then we'd actually already be seeing that template design here instead. But I left it so I had to manually apply the template. So to do that, over to the edit screen for this blog post. Notice in the AE post template box, I can now select a layout for this post. It's currently set to global. So in this case, this is my themes single post template. But if I'd have selected auto apply, then that template would be the global one here instead. So I'll choose blog post one and update. Then over to refresh the blog post. Ah, it's not full width yet. That's because the single post template actually replaces just the main content area of the post or the page it's applied to. So if we come back to our blog post edit page, you'll see in Generate Press this blog post is set to the default container. So I'll set it to full width. Update again. Back to the blog post to refresh it again. And that's a lot better. Okay, let's apply blog post two now. And update it. Refresh the post again. And that's now showing the alternative template. Marvelous.
And that, my friends, is how to build a single post template with Elementor. And don't forget, you don't have to remember all this now. I've made you a simple one page PDF cheat sheet for this entire process. So you can refer to it in future again and again. To grab your own cheat sheet, just head to designbuildweb.co slash Elementor single post template. Pop in your details and I'll send it over to you. I help non-coder designers build beautiful websites. So make sure you don't miss a video by subscribing to my YouTube channel. And please like the video and drop me a comment below. Now I save all my best stuff for my email subscribers like exclusive live webinars and training. So pop to designbuildweb.co slash my best stuff and make sure you don't miss out. Thanks very much.